Hey, so I just wanted to make a quick note to say that this video, along with all the rest in this super long series, um, these were created back at the end of 2021, beginning of 2022. And um, so you'll hear me talking um, to a specific group of people and they are the wonderful ladies in my private Facebook group called The Branches. And I had done this, um, well, mostly for me, but as also a little something for them, um, for if anyone else was in the same boat I was when um, in regards to salvation and having assurance of salvation. So I hope you enjoy this and um, let me know if you have any questions or want to talk further on the topic. Talk to you later, guys. Bye. Hello. Welcome to day four of our week five study of assurance of salvation. We are finishing up today our study of vital sign number four, compassion for believers. And we have been discovering that what a true what kind of love comes from a true believer and um, it's the only kind of love that can come from someone because Christ is shining through them his love is shining through them and um, if you haven't seen days one through three yet I really encourage you to go back through and and take a look at those and take a listen and today we're going to go through our first subheading, which is, If God So Loved Us. And it says, A godlike love is a love like God showed us when he gave us his son to die for our sins. And we're going to reference 1 John chapter 4, verse 9 through 11. It says, By this, the love of God was manifested in us that God sent his only begotten son into the world so that we might live through him. This is love, not that we loved, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. It is clear from these verses that we are to love others as God has loved us. But how did the Father love us? In the greatest act of love, God gave up his only begotten Son to save hell-bound, hostile rebels such as you and me. We often think of the sacrificial love of Christ at the cross, and rightfully so. But here it is, the sacrificial love of God, the Father, that ought to grip us. It was the Father who sent his Son to be crucified by the very people he loved. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. Everyone knows where that was from, John three sixteen. Now let that sink in afresh. How great must have been the Father's love to part with his Son and watch him be brutally put to death by those he was sent to save. He gave his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins when his wrath burned with holy anger against us. It was while we deserved hell that God offered up his son. He took the initiative and loved us in spite of ourselves. If God had waited to love us in response to our love for him, he would never have loved us. He simply chose to love us as a free exercise of his sovereign will. Praise his name. This is how we are to love others. Without waiting for others to reach out to us, we are to initiate love toward them, even to those who are offensive to us. When others harm us or injure our feelings, we must choose to love them. Even when our righteous anger is rightfully aroused, 
We must not let it keep us from reaching out to others. Love produces assurance. John concludes that we can be absolutely sure that we are in God and He in us as we observe His love manifested in our lives. 1 John 4, 12-13, it says, No one has beheld God at any time. If we love one another, God abides in us, and his love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us, because he has given us of his spirit. Although God cannot be seen, we nevertheless can see him revealed through our lives when we love others. I can see that God is real in my life and abides in me when he when his love grows and matures within me, reaching out to others. It is by the expression of divine love, perfected, brought to maturity in us, that we know that we reside in God and he resides in us. His love is never stagnant in us, but ever transforming us and always prodding us to grow and deepen in that love. 1 John 4, 14 to 16 says, We have seen and testify that the Father has sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God abides in him and he in God. We have come to know that we have come to know and have believed the love which God has for us. God is love. And the one who abides in love abides in God and God abides in him. There are two ways to know that God lives in us and we in God. One is by confessing Jesus Christ. The other is by abiding in God's love. We can know that we have genuinely confessed Christ if we abide in his love, and we know that we abide in his love when his love extend, is extended through us to others. We can know that our confession of Christ is real as we see God's love produced in us for others. The one who abides in love is the one who abides in Christ. And 1 John 4, 17 to 18 says, By this love is perfected with us so that we may have confidence in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so also are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, because fear involves punishment, and the one who fears is not perfected in love. So reinforcing the same truth, John says the assurance of salvation may be ours as we see love for, our, for others flow from our lives. We may have confidence in our relationship with God, face the coming day of judgment without fear, and know that our faith is real as we see that our love for others is real. So let's take an inward look. These straightforward truths about love are a cause for self-examination in all our lives. With soul-searching transparency, we must look carefully for the evidences of God's supernatural love within us. Only as we dis discover such love within us can we have a true assurance of salvation. Has the supernatural love of God flooded your soul and given you a sacrificial love for others? That's the first question he's asking. Now take a, take a moment to really self-examine yourself and take a search of, of your life and answer that question honestly. Has the supernatural love of God flooded your soul and given you a sacrificial love for others? And has God's love become real in your life? Do you reach out to people and love them with a new patience and forgiveness or do you still harbor resentment and nurse grudges? Does your love go beyond mere feelings to sacrificial service and sensitive concern? 
or do you continue to live in an utterly self-focused way? Do you have a real concern for others or are you still callous and indifferent toward them? A genuine believer is marked by genuine love. Only as our love for others is real can we be absolutely sure that our conversion to Christ is real. Assurance is real when love gets real. And that's the end of this session um, for vital sign number four. Hello. So my video had stopped recording right at the end. At least it waited till the end, but it stopped recording and I didn't get to give you guys a closure. But I was just going to let it let it let it slide and let it go that way, but then I thought, no, I want to give them a closure. So here we are. <laughs> a different day, but um a closure for day 4 nonetheless. And I just wanted to touch base with you guys um, regarding our week of study of, of love. And this is a vital sign that is imperative that we have because it shows that we have been saved and that God is in us. He is creating a new heart in us. And he is at work in us, changing him to the image of his son. So um, I hope that you really, you got a lot from the study and that it was an encouraging study and maybe an eye-opening study. Um, I know that a lot of people think that, yeah, we're loving people, you know, and we're good people and we're loving and so we go based off of that that we're saved but as this study showed us it's a deeper love than that it's we go from a worldly love which is completely conditional of our feelings and circumstances around us and how others act and react and treat us and um, it's completely feeling based but a godly love that is produced in us when he is in us is a completely different kind of love. It's a love where we can put our feelings aside and we can choose to love regardless of our feelings, regardless of our surroundings or um, reactions of people, how people treat us. Or, yeah it's completely different than a worldly love and that's the kind of love that we need to be looking for to have an assurance of our salvation and if you have that kind of love if God is working in your life and in your heart and you see that kind of love um, granted it's not going to be a perfect love but it's something that we practice it's something that we do and we're aware of and we make a choice of on a daily basis and um, if you see that kind of love in you you can have assurance of your salvation you know God is at work in you and um, one thing like a caveat I wanted to say is like if you don't see this in you um, hopefully you will begin to see it in you because I know that's that's the main thing because God is love and he requires us to love as he loves and he will begin working in you um, but maybe you don't see everything all at once he, he might be working on you a little slower I don't know I don't know how that works um, but I can tell in my own personal experience um, I don't have this perfected at all but I do see how he has changed my heart and he's he's called us caused me to slow down on reaction and to think things through and and he's he's opened my eyes to see you know just because this person is treating me the way they are it's because their eyes are blinded 
in the darkness. They're still a part of a sinful lifestyle, a sinful world controlled by the devil. No wonder they're treating me this way. Um, and it's like, it's almost like they can't help it. I know that they can, they have choices, but they're blinded by the darkness of sin. And as God has shown his light in my heart, I've come to recognize that and I've come to choose to say, you know, I can love this person regardless of how they're treating me, of how they're acting. And I can choose to sh react to them in kindness. Um, and I know a lot of this uh, study was, it was based on how we treat other believers, how we love other believers. And you know, believers are not perfect people and they will, they will hurt you. And you have to choose to see that we're not perfect. We still have the flesh in us, um, but we have to, to be able to forgive and to choose to love them and to reconcile with them. Don't let the grudge go on. Talk to them. Let them know how they've hurt you in a kind and gentle way. And as, as we grow in our faith and as we commit to practicing this way of love, it'll get easier and it'll, and you know, God will use it more and more. He'll build it up in us more and more. He's always working on our hearts. So if you don't see a perfection of this, that's okay. If you don't see a lot of this at work already, pray about it. Ask God to create a new heart in you, Psalm 51. And, um, you know, make a choice to commit to, to love this way. And, and pray for God to help you through it. And he will. That's within his will. This is something he will do. So I hope that this has been an encouragement for you. And again, I um, encourage you to go to your Bibles and, and read the verses on love. And um, read the verses that I've provided for you within the study. And of course, if you have any questions or anything, you just need to talk. Just let me know and I will be glad to talk. One last thing because I almost forgot. I wanted to go over this. Um, another thing about love that you see from a worldly basis is a lot of people, because of their worldly view of love, they don't understand the godly view of love they think that affirming someone in their sin is love but it's not they think that when someone <clears throat> corrects someone else and says you shouldn't be doing these things that that's not love but that's exactly what love is because we love people so much it is up to us to tell them where they're where they're in wrong, where they're erring in sin so that they can come to repentance and hopefully come to salvation, a true saving faith. Um, and in regards to, to people like, well, we of course have to do that with our brothers and sisters. We need to keep each other in check. But those outside of Christianity, um, even those who claim to be Christians, but you see a continual lifestyle of sin in their life, they have to be made aware of it. We can't affirm that that their sin is okay, um, especially in the culture today where a lot of sin is, um, it's okay to everyone now, and it's the norm. And for a Christian, it shouldn't be the norm. We're called to be a holy people, which means we're called to be set apart holy means set apart and we're not to to take sin and be affirming of it we know it's a sin and we have to say something about it and that is not being mean that is being loving that is a godly love 
and um, of course do it in a gentle and kind way in an understanding way we were there once as well we we were there and um, and just think about it would you take take it better for someone to come and come to you in a gentle way or come to you pointing their finger in your face saying you're doing wrong you're a sinner you need to <laughs> repent that doesn't work well <laughs> so yeah just show the love of God show your peace and kindness the fruits of the Spirit in Galatians and um, I just I just wanted to make that a caveat because we should be appalled by sin and should never affirm it just because we think it's the loving thing to do the godly loving thing to do is to let them know it's sin and um, so that's I guess I just wanted to add that in there um, because I didn't mention it before and he did um, talk about that a little bit it's in um, Corinthians um, where we should not love evil and my my <laughs> my doggy is wanting out so I better let you guys go um, so yeah anyway I think that's all that I needed to say and I hope so anyway because I don't want to have to do another video to end my ending of my original video if that makes any sense so I guess I will talk to you guys later I look forward it forward to next week and um, it's Christmas week so um, I wonder I haven't asked him yet, but I wonder if maybe James will let me do another drawing raffle. So, since it's Christmas, even though he already let me do three, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> I'll talk to you guys later. I love you, everyone. Bye.